Then she puts them on a dish, as I have done in the oven, and she um, leaves them there for quarter of an hour, a gas mark a half, so that the fondueing finishes at that very low temperature, or for up to half an hour, a gas mark a quarter. And then, when I take the ones out of the oven, which I shall be doing in a moment, I would expect, if I'm not failing, for them to be lovely and gooey in the middle. I don't think that one has burst. No, he hasn't, but there is a danger of these bursting. It's all right, I've got cast iron hands, as you probably realise by now. Lift him out. No, he hasn't. It's just some little bits of extra. Here we are, Peter. Now, put those in to finish fondueing. Let me turn this gas out before we get blinded with smoke from the oil. We have a look at the finished ones. There we are. Set them over there so that you can see. And let's take one up at random. Put it on here. Take a sharp knife, right through the middle, and you see how that all oozes out and becomes gooey and sticky. That's the only way that they're worth eating. And I'm getting signals to tell me I should go on to the next dish, so we shall move on. But before we do so, we must just finish our dish, if we're going to have a look at it later, with a few sprigs of parsley and we'll catch up time and we we'll move on. The next thing I want to introduce you to the gan is the usual, it's the reversal of the usual classic way, but gan as a peasant dish in northern Italy, on the frontiers between France and Italy, you know, in Provence, and then was taken hold of by a very clever French woman who had a very smart restaurant down there, a Madame Baudouin, who is quite an old lady now, but still there, and she transformed it into a very elegant dish. It is the only cold omelette of France and the only French omelette which, in fact, is actually baked. So now let me put those over there for one of the children to take and clear for me and we'll start it together. We begin with six eggs. Now don't I have a fit when I tell you omelette that has six eggs because in the slices that you serve as an hors d'oeuvre or as part of a buffet a cheese and wine party you can get twenty out. It comes out of the oven looking like a hard cheese. It cuts like a gato and I think it's absolutely super. When you've got your eggs in, just beat them up lightly as you would for an omelette. Don't bash them about until they're dandy, you know, or tickle them with overbeating. And then gradually beat in four ounces of, this time, the hard, classic Parmesan cheese. Add to that four ounces, well, three to four ounces, actually, of spinach, which you cook dry, of course, because, you know, you never use anything. You just wash it and put it in the pan. And finally, four ounces of white meat. Now, the classic one that Madame Baudouin advocates is veal, which I'm breaking up with my fingers now. But I have found that it's perfectly successful when you do it with the chicken, veal, so the classic one, uh, lamb, pork, all the white meats. However, I'm sticking to the golden rules made by the old lady, and she adopted this. In the origin, the French peasants used to have their wives make it with lashing of garlic in it's been dropped all together, which I'm sure you won't mind about. And, uh, and they used to take it neatly between slices of bread with something called blaya. Now I said spinach just now, but it's a first cousin of spinach. And the origin, the original name was Trotte de Blaya because it was done with these long, long leaves of the spinach family with a great deal of white flesh, as thick as a piece of rhubarb, running down the centre. And highly um, careful housewives use those white stems for a vegetable at night and put the spinach leaves in with any old odd bit of raw meat a very strange character because it had introduced some strange things to meat as you may know to um, give them with their bread and their wine for them to eat in the fields or the vineyards during the day and then as I say Madame Baudouin made the thing plus raffiné more elegant for her very elegant restaurant now while we've been talking that's a lot we now have I'll give those over there and take this here the container you can use an ordinary meat baking tin if you want to i've got here just an earthenware container as the outer one and into that i put a pint of cold water it can be warm if you like it doesn't really matter and then you scrape the whole of that mixture into your souffle mold cover it with a bit of foil or a lid whichever you like you can use any straight-sided container but remember it must be straight-sided because you turn it out when it looks like cheese, as I said, it tastes like a gato, 
and cuts and slices for eating, not only for hors d'oeuvre, here we go, or for a cheese party, but also for the thing I use it for most of all, picnics. I go to foil and into another of my ovens because I've got four of them here and we cover them and uncover them as we want them and have proper working surfaces when we don't want them. So this will go in now on the middle shelf. A gas mark four and there it will cook for one and a quarter hours. Now, it's important to remember that when it's cooked, it comes out of the oven, it is in fact left until it's cold before we turn it up. This is really vital. I'm just putting my things away. You do see, don't you, why I'm so thrilled, even at this early stage of my kitchen. I think it's the absolute reduction and absurdum of time and motion. Just for instance, when I want salt and pepper from here, or when I want my cold on the table, I don't move a step or to put things into the sink, or indeed to go to any of these covers, you see? Just here, the whole thing and no movement. I'm not too keen, thank you, Sally dear, on overworking myself. There's plenty to do without doing that. And so now I've got it here, the cold one, contracted in its container. And unless I'm going to look a perfect goat, all I've got to do is to turn it out, put it back on the table, lift it off, and there it is. I'm going to show it to you first before I put it in. Do you see how you get this lovely yellow cap of the actual egg? And then all your green and your meat and stuff on the sides, and you simply put it into the middle of your salads, and thereby concealing any little bits of that base that I turned it on. And there is your top of the blaya omelette vert or green cold omelette base in the oven. We'll meet it again later. Because in the meantime, now I want to show you something well, really rather ridiculous. But you know, I always have little bits of gimmicks, and I always feel that. When women are there and cook hostesses, they need to have little reserves of emergency stuff tucked away. 